It is a common misconception to think that all who follow the Chaos Gods were born into the chaotic tribes of the North. That every man, woman and beast which are blessed by the ruinous powers have devoted themselves since birth. But this is not always the case. Sometimes a man or woman of pious nature will find their very being tested. Desperation calling to higher powers for aid and the only answer coming to them being that from which wishes to corrupt. Come, let us talk about Festus the Leech Lord, a once great man turned servant of Nurgle, the Lord of Decay. A practicing doctor in the Nordland provincial capital of Salzenmund, Dr. Festus was well renowned, known for his kind, caring eyes, generosity, and dedicated nature to aiding those who need it the most. To say that Festus was popular within the city, and in truth the rest of Nordland, is a massive understatement. He only charged a fee to those who could afford to pay, and due to his prowess, the richest would pay handsomely for his services. With his wealth, he founded several hospices across Nordland, the Salzenmund Hospice among them, and his biggest asset in both mortal life and in chaos corruption. The Salzenmund Hospice is a large brick building on grassy grounds, with halls to care for the seriously ill, cells for the insane, and a wing devoted to childbirth, where itinerant priestesses of Raya often assist the Shalyans who now lay claim to the hospice. Admission is by referral from the Temple of Shalya or the Salzenmund Guild of Kairujans, Physicians and Barbers. There is a fee, but those unable to pay may be subsized by the Shalyans. This is of course in the most common time where Festus does not make his presence known there anymore. Serious or extremely contagious diseases are taken elsewhere. For example, those with Black Plague are transported to the Soishenhof Hospice near Osland. Mutants and other particular worrying cases are given experimental treatments and then quietly euthanized without the knowledge of the Shalyans. The cult of Shalya was very involved with the good doctor's works, as they believed Dr. Festus was favored by Shalya and would one day become a venerated soul. His hospices would receive funds and donations without question. A man of corrupt nature would have easily taken advantage of this, but the good doctor will have none of the sort. His inventiveness in formulating new unguents and salves helps Nordland overcome a wave of plagues, including the Screaming Egg, Black Liege, and Ghoulpox. It was the onset of gnashing fever that marked the beginning of the end for Festus. Try as he might, the doctor could not stem the spread of this new and highly contagious disease. Festus locked himself in his laboratory, working ceaselessly to create a healing elixir. Countless sleepless nights passed, and despite his best efforts, Festus still had no cure. And if he and his subordinates could not find a cure, then the fever would spread, taking not only Salzenmund, but perhaps the whole old world by surprise. Many would die, and it fell onto him to save his kinsmen. Those plague victims he had managed to sequester into his laboratory were dying, and he was powerless to prevent it. As the last of his test subjects shook themselves to death, Festus dropped to his knees, crying out for help. One by one, the slack-jawed corpses in Festus's laboratories turned their heads to look at him, with one voice emanating from a score of parched throats. They promised to give Festus the knowledge necessary to cure not only this plague, but all diseases in the world, in return for a lifetime of service. In his desperation, Festus agreed. In the blink of a bloodshot eye, Festus's mind was filled with every detail of every sickness, ailment, and plague known to the great god Nurgle. This drove him entirely mad, washing away his compassion and leaving nothing more than an intimate knowledge of disease and a desire to experiment. Festus became the leech lord of Nurgle, who goes to war in the name of furthering his revolting studies. Though his curative powers are greater than ever before, woe betide the fool who crosses the doctor, for he is not above force-feeding his latest concoctions to his victims in his quest to bring 
ever more repugnant forms of life into the world, if a traveller were to stray onto the twisted roads that leads from the forest into the chaos waste, he might be paid a visit by a most unsavoury individual during the dark of the night. A shuffling, muttering figure stalks these lands, his moth-eaten robes gently clicking with vials containing unimaginable concoctions that he seeks to test out upon those he can catch. A devotee of the plague god Nurgle, this mysterious apothecary is quite, quite mad. Though once he bore the respect of physicians and scientists across the length and breadth of the old world, Festus largely remains within the lands of the Empire. His medical practices also remain open. The Shalians, despite knowing his fall to chaos, chose to keep the hospices open in an effort to still provide help within that area, and most, if not all, all of the general populace remain unknowing of his fall. Some believe he simply continued his research in far-off lands to find cures for horrible ailments, gone to help others around the world. Others believe he had succumbed to one of the plagues that ravaged the land, but perhaps it's best to not let the common folk know that their good doctor had fallen to chaos, for such knowledge would surely create civil unrest. Dr. Festus now roams the Empire and beyond, seeking new diseases and experimenting on people as he goes. He spends a great deal of time in the Altdorf sewers, cooking up horrible potions and plotting. He has another laboratory outside Selzenmund, in the cellars of an abandoned fortified manor house, in the forest a few miles from Tetons. The old track which leads from the road is completely overgrown, and records of the house are lost in the dusty archives in Castle Salzenmund. Festus's lair stands in a clearing, its walls crumbling with damp, and the worm-riddled door hanging from the frame. Festus lets the manor itself rot and keeps to the cellars, where he brings experimental subjects and composes missives to the Tanian Fellowship. A loose confederation of physicians who correspond on matters anatomical and medical. They are orchestrated by Dr. Festus, who presents himself as a learned doctor sharing information on rare diseases. He encourages experimentation with the secret aim of infecting the healthy and spreading disease. Only the inner circle of the fellowship know Festus's true nature and the real ambitions of the cult. The cult itself is based throughout all of Nordland, but they often return to the Salzenman Hospice, for it seems the good doctor is rather attached to his former study. Hidden in the cellar of the hospice, behind the locked door, is a brick-lined hall. It descends 20 yards to a huge waterlogged cavern, choked with the bones and rotting carcasses of the mutated and diseased. Some patients weren't quite dead when dropped into the pit, and they survived by eating corpses. The pit is a lair for a pack of ghouls who swim throughout the dark water in search of fresh bodies. There the good doctor may work undisturbed, preparing his plagues and gifts from Grandfather Nurgle. Soon enough, an illness will sweep throughout the lands, and maybe then Festus's blessings may be increased tenfold, and his ascension to demonhood may finally begin. So, this is the story of Dr. Festus, mostly focusing around quotes from various books. Unfortunately, there is just not a lot of lore when it comes to this character, as he was introduced through some editions, mostly from some of Onwards, but he didn't get a standalone book, like say for example, Azazel who was mentioned in the Sigmar books, Valkyrie the Bloody who had her own book too, it's a common reoccurrence when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy. Hopefully in the future we might see some new books coming out because, you know, with the return of Warhammer Fantasy in the form of Warhammer the Old World, there is a chance that we could see big characters such as this have their name brought out in their own feature novel. Either way, I like covering these characters despite not having that much lore, because it's always rather interesting to see a good guy turn to chaos. It happens more often than not a lot of people think, and it shows a lot of human nature. It's a weird thing, but you know, the whole when things get desperate, you do what you can. The problem is obviously with the work of chaos here. 
it doesn't really work out the way you intended to. I don't like to reference the end times a lot, but Festus is actually quite active there. It is his quest to become a fully fledged demon prince, which is obviously the goal of most Chaos worshippers. Through that, he was able to launch an attack from under Altdorf, through the undercity there, and did quite a bit of damage, landing a mortal blow on King Leon Leonka himself. But eventually he was defeated by a spell cast by Vlad von Karstein, who had come into the defense of Altdorf. The End Times is a very strange timeline, which we will eventually cover in full detail in a series of videos, but I always figured that it was nice to mention that because you don't really hear about a lot of them actually becoming full demon princes, obviously Azazel did, but Azazel's story was more focused on mania rather than Festus's fall from grace. And that's why I really like Festus, and hopefully we get to see more characters like this in the future. But let me know what you guys think about Festus the Leech Lord in the comments below. If you're looking for the books that I've referenced, they will be listed in the description. And hopefully it won't be too long until we can discuss another character. But until then, have a good day.